The continuation of the Congregational Meeting of the Pleasantville Presbyterian Church has been called and will take place at 11 a.m. on Sunday, January 30th, 2022. The purposes of the meeting are to elect elders and deacons for terms of service beginning in February 2022, adopt bylaw changes, present the annual report, and include reports from our committees and organizations to review the report of the treasurer and the 2022 budget and any other business as appropriate. An email with the link and the digital form of the annual report will be sent out on Saturday, January 29th and in the morning of Sunday, January 30th, 2022. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact Kathy Fellows, Clerk of Session at clerk at pvillepresby.org. Good morning. Welcome to worship with Pleasantville Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you've joined us this morning. We invite you to say hello in the chat. Arise, shine, for our light has come. Come, let us worship our living God. Let us join together in the prayer of confession. Spirit and breath of life, before you we recognize that our spirits are not fully alive. We have succumbed to the sin of despair. We have been lifeless, not lively in our faith. Breathe your spirit of power into us, that our faith may be active in word and deed, and that your name may be glorified in Jesus our Christ. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our transgressions from us. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love for us. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us greet one another with the peace of Christ. Peace to everybody. May the peace be with you. May the peace be with you. 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 Peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you. Good morning, everyone. I'm excited to share today's reading with everyone. Uh, it is from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 8 through 13. One of my favorite passages of all time. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, and I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. 
And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Morning, everyone, and welcome to the Children's Sermon. Special edition coming at you from the sanctuary today. Uh, there's nobody else here, so it's okay to not be wearing a mask. Anyhow, uh, what I want to talk about today is kind of considering the foundations for the Tower of Life. And let me show you the Tower of Life. Ta-da! This is the Tower of Life. It might look like Jenga, but it's not Jenga. It's the Tower of Life. So today I want to talk about how we make decisions and choose to build our lives. And each brick here represents something that we value or think is important in our lives. So for example, uh, maybe having close friends, that would be a brick in the, in the, in the tower of life here. So the question is, uh, when we're talking about what God has told us to do and what we've incorporated in our lives, you know, we've learned some things, we've, we've experienced some things, we've seen how other people live their lives. We try to make sure our lives are the best it possibly can be. So let's put it to the test, see if we have lived and, and constructed a sound life. Let's remove block number one, because sometimes, um, you know, if we want to see what's part of this tower of life, you got to remove a brick to see what it says, right? And also sometimes life puts us to the test. So we're going to put this tower to the test. So I'm just going to remove this block. Maybe this is a block of, of having friends or spending time uh, at a beach. Uh, then we have the block uh, potentially of, of wisdom. All right, we know things. We're really sure about ourselves. Okay, we got the block here of, oh, this one's pretty sound. It's getting a little shaky. I don't know. This is the brick of, of like making lots of money, like having a really big bank account. All right, let's do this one. Ooh, getting a little wobbly here. This is the brick of, 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 of prophecy. And of prophecy, I mean like being able to feel like you could potentially predict the future per se, or you feel really good about what's going to happen in your life. You know everything per se. And let's say this is also the, the block of, oh, let's see, I don't know. There's not too many good shit things holding this thing up. This is maybe the brick of self-assuredness and, and maybe over self-confidence. And let's go one more block before it gets really interesting. This is the block maybe of, of positivity because that's important in life too. Now, here's the thing though. If I start to remove an important block, uh-oh, let's see how long this lasts. Oh! Oh my gosh, all these important bricks that we have. But what is the most important thing if we've constructed well? That God, no matter what foundation we have built for ourselves, he will continue to have for us. Well, if you can't see here, we have three words that remain. And the first word is faith. The next word is hope. And the top word is love. So in our tower of life, where we think that we have lots of important things in our lives and we've, we've been able to accomplish, it's not necessarily what we have done, but what God has given us. And if we've come to church and we've been prayerful and we continue to seek God and Jesus, chances are we're going to have some faith, some hope, and some love, and the greatest of these being love. And as you can tell, God's going to put this here no matter what our foundation. If we have a foundation in God, we're going to be looking good. Let's say a quick prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to build our tower of life. We pray that we can may construct it around you, but we also want to recognize the fact that it is you that is the one who is going to bring us faith, hope, and love. Let us put our cares and concerns and our hopes and dreams in you, Lord, because we know that you're going to provide. Lord, let us live with love, with hope, and with faith. Amen.
from Jeremiah 1. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the listening ears of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. John and I had been dating for a few years when we went to visit my brother at Christmas time. My brother was the only one in the family who had children, a beautiful and bright duo of four-year-old and a baby girl. My nephew, Jared, had gotten a present for Christmas that his parents were very excited to give him, a huge castle that had little people you could move into the rooms and set up with miniature cannons and a drawbridge. When Jared saw the present, he said, oh, that is just what I did not want. My nephew has always been good with his words. Still, Jared became more enthusiastic as the day went on, and when we arrived, he invited John to sit down to him to play with the castle, saying, you wanna play war? And something struck John in that moment, and he said, well, what if we play peace? How do you play peace, Jared asked. I don't know. Let's figure it out, John told him, and they did. And according to my brother, from then on, the game people were invited to play was the game called Peace. I was remembering that moment when I read Jeremiah's answer to God. I'm only a boy, Jeremiah said. At that time, a boy would have been somebody 10 or younger. A boy wouldn't have wanted to hear that he was a prophet wouldn't have wanted to understand what it was he was supposed to do. He would have wanted to play with his toys and his imaginary castle and figure out who he was going to be as he grew up in the world. Jeremiah grew up in a town called Anathoth. Now Anathoth was an interesting place. When King David rejected the rules of succession and decided that his younger son Solomon should be king, not his elder son, Adonijah, David had not let the general who stood with his rejected son live, but the priest that stood with Adonijah, he exiled them to Anathoth, which is where Jeremiah grew up, three miles outside of Jerusalem. The people of this city, they continue to oppose the way that Solomon had gone, focusing on ostentatious palaces and military strength. Jeremiah grew up centered in these points of view. He knew that if God was lifting him up to be a prophet, it must mean that he would be saying the words he'd been hearing his whole life. Words people didn't want to hear about how this kind of kingdom would not stand. Who can blame Jeremiah for wanting to keep being a child? He didn't want to enter the world of war and try to speak peace into that world. Notice that there are twice as many words of destruction in this passage as there are words of hope. The breaking down has to come before the building up and with all that God's people have amassed, the breaking down would take a while. God chooses Jeremiah and it isn't easy. The pain he feels in his life as a prophet is well documented in the book. More than other prophets, we hear Jeremiah tell God that this journey is not what he wants that he is following because he has to, because he can feel God's words burning inside him and he has to let them out. There are times when we know that remaining silent is not an option. Times when we know we have to speak for justice and cannot leave well enough alone. The messages of Jeremiah are still relevant today 
We too live in an age that believes the abundance of wealth is a sure sign of people's value. We too live in an age that says that our own military domination is more important than making space for caring for those who the world sees as invisible. Do we really believe that God isn't trying to get our attention here and now? To open our eyes to see the truth of our situation? There's a woman I heard speak once, her name is Valerie Cower. She talked at that time about what it was like to be Sikh in this country. She was at a conference about making peace and she was telling us that because her faith resembled other faiths, people saw her as different, saw her as not belonging, saw her as not being part of the community. They constantly said to her and to her family, you need to go back home when they had lived here in this country for generations. But she wasn't negative. She constantly brought up that what was important was learning to love one another, to look in each other's eyes and see another human being. She got famous a little while ago because at a time of great political unrest, she came forward and said, maybe this is a time for birth. Maybe this is a time for going inward and finding the love in us and transitioning to a new place in our journey. A lot of people liked it. It went viral on YouTube, but other people didn't. And she and her family, her young child got death threats. So they did leave this country for a while to go to Central America to try to heal their souls. But she had to come back because there were still words to say. She wrote a book called See No Stranger, a memoir and a manifesto of revolutionary love. God calls us to speak love into hate, to speak caring for others into a world that sometimes feels like it's forgotten, that that's what we are here to do. Love our neighbors as ourselves, love our enemies, Love God with all that we are. This is the definition of revolutionary love. We can make room for what God is doing to change us and to guide us and to lead us and to truly make us whole. We can learn to see each other with open eyes, to know that we are all connected, that we all need each other. We can pay attention to opportunities to practice revolutionary love on a daily basis. May we let God's word burn in us and help us stand in the world for love that will not let us go. Love that leads to the ways of making peace. In Jesus name, amen.
Dear God, we give you thanks that you walk with us and open our eyes to the ways that we can be your voice, your feet, your hands, your presence in this world. Help us to be your body, doing that that you call us to do. We pray this day for those who are ill and need your healing touch, for those who are grieving and need your comfort. We pray for those who are looking for peace and cannot find it. Help us, O oh Lord. You walk with us. You know us. Help us be together more than we could ever be apart. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. go forward from this place, certain in our knowledge of the love of God, the peace of Christ Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. not close our hearts to each other while we stand so far apart with the road ahead uncertain time both mast and marked may we know the bonds between us remain stayed and steady still our embrace is distant waiting New landscapes must be built. We'll find new ways to sing together across the miles. And one day we'll be together after these trials. Hopes lie dashed and futures tossed We will know our strength and trust our ties Our future and our hearts We'll find new ways to sing together Across the miles And one day we'll be together After these trials together 